What is up, fam? Agent O here with another action figure review. And today I have the SH Figure Arts 10th Anniversary Makai Kai Makai Kai. Kai, Kai <laughs> Sorry, that's just a little a little inside joke. This is the Makai Kato Garo 10th Anniversary action figure. And I'm so happy to finally get a hold of a Garo figure that wasn't going to cost me an arm and a leg. Um, because the older ones were just super expensive because I didn't get them in time when they were originally available. So I'm going to get this guy out of the box and we're going to do this review because I'm super excited. Alright, so per usual, going to start off with the figure himself. This here is Garo. Very, very cool design. I have actually, I have to confession to make because I have not watched the live action series yet at all. Like Strident introduced me to this and he kept telling me how I need to watch this. is really dope. You got to watch it. And I just never did. I even have it. I have it on a disc somewhere and I just never watched it. And so... But I was intrigued by the design. I watched a little bit of the of the show, but uh, I was like, "Yo, that would make a really cool action figure." When I found out that they did do action figures of these of this guy and some of the other characters from the show, I tried to get them, and they were super expensive. I, I just didn't bother. I couldn't 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 justify buying it. But um, they just released this. This is like my first purchase of the actually yeah of the new year. I think. Um, no, I'm sorry. This isn't the first purchase of the new year. I bought this before 2016. Um, found it on a site that, because it had just been released not too long ago. Found it on uh, Nippon Yasan for, they had it on sale for like $43. So I jumped on that shit. And I'm happy I did because this is a really, really awesome figure. Um, I'm going to just close up on him because there's just so much detail on this guy. Just... It's crazy the amount of detail they, they uh, whoever modeled this guy in whatever CAD program they were using, they need an award because there's just so much nice detail on the armor. Um, it, I mean, there's, I mean, there's nothing. I there's, I have no problems, no issues whatsoever. This thing just looks fabulous, just <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> This thing just looks awesome. Um, every inch of this figure, the armor, just has all kinds of cool detail going on. Even on the hands, on each individual hand. I don't know if it'll zoom in properly on my camera. He's on just on the left hand because he's got that little guy. I forgot what the fuck his name is. Because I did watch the Japanese animated series, the first series of Garo. I think it's just called Garo the Animation. Um, I, f I saw it online and actually watched it. And I knew enough about Garo to get an idea of what the show was about. Um, you know, with the Makai Knights and how they fight horrors. And uh, which are demons basically it's just their word of for demon and uh, it's I mean I, I enjoyed it it's I mean it didn't blow my mind or anything but I did have I did enjoy watching the watching the anime and uh, watching the characters and stuff but enough about that let's just talk about this really really awesome figure um it's not perfect but it does it has some has some minor issues but it's it's really up there. This is the kind of figure I like to see coming out of SH Figure Arts. So, let's just, you know, now I've, I've kind of got the aesthetics out of the way. Kind of. I mean, I, I just, there's, I just, I can't talk enough about how good this guy looks. You know, the paint apps are, are just applied wonderfully. There's absolutely no slop on this guy um, whatsoever. I love how they added the darker... The darker gold on his chest and shoulder, just wherever there would be some kind of shadow, it just really makes the figure just look that much better. Especially like you can see a lot of it on the thighs, that that darker uh, that darker gold, um, just the the layered armor plating, all the little fancy like designs. The I don't know what you would call that. The like. 
it's not calligraphy, but it kind of reminds me of stuff like that. Um, the face of the, the helmet of the armor. I mean, just, man, this is, to me, this is an action figure work of art. To be able to, to be able to do this much and show this much detail and not pay out the yin-yang for it. Um, just wonderful. So, you know, I, I, this is, it's hard to critique something when it's done right. And this is one of those figures that aesthetically it's done right. Um, I'll just get into the articulation real quick. And I'm surprised because I was a little worried because I've seen some of these Garo figures in the past really lacking in the articulation department due to the sculpt of the armor um, getting in the way. And that isn't completely the case with this guy. Uh, just with the head, he's got, since his neck is also on a, on a joint, he can bend his head, his head down about that far. He can bend it up that high it's not really high because whoops I just knocked off a piece it's not really high because he's got that back collar piece keeping the head from going completely all the way back these these are removable pieces uh, for his cape which accessory which I'll get into later the you can turn the head you won't be able to do it 360 degrees but I don't see the point never doing that so but he turns side to side really really nicely it's just up and down it's not the greatest but I don't care because he's never going to be looking down the mouth is also articulated you can see right there it's it's a little loose I kind of wish it was a little uh, firmer but once you put it up there as long as you don't mess around with it it stays it stays up and once it's down it stays down um, but you know enough about that the shoulder pads this was one of my big worries was the shoulder pads on this guy I thought they weren't gonna move at all just from looking at some of the pictures and stuff but you know they they move up about that high and you know they're only on like a single hinge and you get a you get a decent amount of play on there so when you move his arm up it's not actually the sh it's not completely the shoulder plaid blocking the arm it's more the ball joint and you know just how much it doesn't it's it they don't give you a whole lot of give but you do have some you do have some you know back and forth uh, movement at the shoulder as long as, as well as up and down you have a bicep swivel you also have double jointed elbows oops Sorry, I just took off his hand. You also have, you also have, um, sorry, you also have rotation at the on the wrist. You also have rotation on the hands, on the um back and forth, and you know because they're on a ball joint. And these cuffs, these cuffs aren't attached to anything, so they float around, so you can, so they don't get in the way of articulating, you know, the hands. And you know, here's a ball joint. For you to see off the off the hand since this hand kind of came off and I'll be getting to that subject in a little bit you know what I'll just do it now these ball joints aren't the greatest uh, they feel like they're a little too small for this figure especially for the hands like once they're on they're on but they do come off really easily I mean there's just no effort at all pulling these apart and it kinda blows because when you're posing them I had trouble a little bit of trouble when I was posing them with the sword and just having it pop off at times like see it's just just a little bit just a little bit of adjusting and they popped off like that I mean I don't know if that's every figure or just mine but that's an issue I had not the greatest but it's it doesn't de it doesn't deter that much from the figure you just got to be a little careful with him but moving on with the articulation um, he's on a his hip swivel is on a ball joint so you can pretty much turn him all the way around if you needed to and you know he rotates side to side as far as I can tell there is no diaphragm joint on on him um, he his, there's just there's just the uh, hip swivel and the hip swivel gives you a lot of leeway and a lot of tilt so I mean this is how far back he goes with uh, on the hip swivel this is how far forward he comes he can't move that much forward because of this big you know belt buckle medallion thing in the front 
which I think is like the symbol of the Makai Knight. I don't know. I, I really need to watch this show now. Uh, but moving on to the hips, lower the lower on the hips. He's got he's got a. You can rotate. You can rotate at the thigh, but he's also got a thigh swivel. Now, unfortunately, he can't spread his legs open that far. You have to kind of play with it a little bit to kind of get it to finagle a little bit out, out a little bit more. But it's you know the armor kind of gets in the way, and I don't think if you can if I can get some light on there, it doesn't look like where the in the ball joint it doesn't like it was sculpted to allow you a lot of uh, a lot of freedom this would have been the perfect time for uh, figure arts or Bandai to use that type 1 hip joint where the where the hip comes down where the I'm sorry the leg comes down at the thigh and then you can bend it out then you could bend the leg out outward a little bit more this would have been like the perfect figure to actually use that on because he actually could have used that kind that level of articulation so it's kind of unfortunate that they didn't um that they didn't include that um this particular figure so but you know like i said he does have he does rotate um at the at the hip he also has a thigh swivel for even more rotation and he has double jointed knees so you get a lot of a lot of move a lot of uh, range of motion there on the feet he can uh, his you know his feet bend out that far they they don't come in that far in because of this um, cuff piece but I mean you can rotate it if you really wanted to to get a little bit more um, range of motion and he does not have a toe point which I'm not a, which is fine with me I like toe point but I can live without it if it's not on there but he does have some ankle rockers there as you can see um, not a lot going this way but you get a decent amount going that way so it's overall he's not the most super poseable figure arts which is you know obviously it's it's what they're known for but I still I still feel for for how Posable, how the lack of posability in the past girl figures. I think this figure really helps, uh, really helps make up for that. So I'm, I'm just really happy I didn't fork over the money and buy any of those older figures since this guy came out because they did make some advancements with the posability with this guy. And I hope they keep working on um, future Garo figures to have even more posability um, in the near future. Now I want to talk a little bit about the accessories he comes with starting with his sword I'm gonna move him out of the way real quick sorry I didn't in order to put the sword on you have to take the end of it off and then put the hand on and then you just stick the end back on there but this is just a really slick looking sword I mean look at the detail on the blade really really nice really well oh, all paint apps are applied really really expertly I mean there's no slop whatsoever on this sword with the, as far as the the designs on it and you know they cram as usual they cram a lot of detail on this on on these accessories um, I just really I mean that's one of the things I like about Garo is his knight sword and this is just a really really well done um, accessory it would have even been cooler it but not necessary if it was if the blade was die cast because I've seen that on some of the SICs and I really like that but this is made out of a pretty pretty tough plastic pretty firm plastic I still would be careful with it because it still feels a bit fragile but it won't warp which is one thing I really hate about swords when they're when you get them and they're all bent and you can't and for some reason they're stuck in the bent um in the bent of in the bent form and they and you can't unbend them they just always go back to that general bent shape so this was was like this when I got out of the package and I was just really happy that it was completely straight I was really happy with this sword he also comes with the scabbard once again 
scabbard just looks really nice. You've got a little bit of the shadow on the tip and the sword fits in there quite nicely. It's not a it's not a you don't feel like a clip. You don't feel like a click when it when it goes into the scabbard. So it's kind of just floating in there, but it's it fits in enough so that it's not going to fall out at all. So just looks good. Looks really nice. Just man, I'm just really impressed with uh I shouldn't be because it's SH Figure Arts. This is the kind of thing you should expect, but I'm just really impressed with with uh with these accessories. And that, I mean that's all he really comes with. He comes with extra hands. Oops, if I can just get them. He comes with extra hands. Garl doesn't come with a whole lot of accessories because all he needs, if you ever watched his show or the anime, all he really needs is his sword. His sword is his main weapon and he's just really powerful with it so he doesn't really need any other, any other, uh, any other weapons. Uh, each Makai Knight has a specific weapon, but he's got different hands. All the left hands have that little skull. It's a ring that helps him uh, control the power of the golden armor. I can't remember what his name is because it talks to the main character. Whoever welds the ring, it talks to them. And I forgot what the name of it is. I think it starts with a zoo, like Zarubo or something like that. I really got to rewatch it again. I don't know why I forgot it because they mention it a lot in the show. But he has a special, he has, you know, your, your, he has your sword holding hands, as you can see. And I mean, the sculpt on these is just really on point. Looks really, really nice. Um, he also has a specific hand, a special left hand that holds the sword. And, you know, you just, it, it fits on there. I mean, it's just, it's like a glove. It fits on, on that scabbard just perfectly. I mean, you shake it and it's not falling off. Um, you know, so I, I know that, I mean, that's just a really nice touch. There's not a right hand for, for that. If I guess because Garo is right-handed, his sword hand is his right hand. So, uh, but he does have other, you know, kind of like a relaxed pose hand. And, uh, here's the relaxed pose on the left hand. Same deal. And, I mean, and that's really it. Because he doesn't come with a whole lot. Um, he does come with the cape. I'm going to pause the video real quick. Uh, before I put it on. I just want to show you the back. Garo's back. Because these pieces come off the, uh, off the shoulder pads. Like so. And then... This middle piece right here pops off because that reveals the peg hole that the cape is going to go into. And then these two pieces, you, you don't have to remove them, but they are removable. I'm just going to take one off. And I'm guessing they're for a wing accessory because I know the older figures came with, uh, you, could, you could get a garl that had wings. Um, golden, you know, angel wings, and I'm guessing that's what these are for, and you know, for uh, maybe an add-on uh, kit late at some point. But I'm just gonna leave them in, and I'm gonna pause the video because I gotta put together the cape, and I will be right back. Okay, this is the cape. It's in pieces, but uh, this is the main back piece that all the other pieces fit on. I like how you have a little bit of, it's a little translucent near the bottom end of the cape. And you know, the uh, paint apps on here are applied quite nicely. Let me get my hand out of the way because my camera's not focusing. But yeah, no slop whatsoever. Nice paint apps, you can kind of see a wolf's head and a sword, two swords in the design. Really cool. These are the two like, these are the end pieces that fit on the cape. And I'll just put them on really quick. Because there's two holes on each side.
and they fit in like so. And there you have it, the cape all together with all the pieces on there. And you just take it and peg it on in the back. And there you go. And that's what he looks like rocking his cape. Um, like I've said in the past, not a big fan of plastic capes. If they could have done a cloth cape with a, that's a little posable with a, um, wires on the sides, I would have been more happy with that. Uh, but I mean, this looks good. I'm not, don't get me wrong, this looks really good. And you know, you can use it to kind of brace him when you're standing him in certain poses, like you can with any other plastic cape. Um, you know, you can spread it, it looks good spread out. It looks good with all the pieces kind of folded in. You fold in all the pieces, it looks pretty good. I mean, I'm not posing them in a really dynamic pose, but I've got pictures for that. I'm not gonna do that on camera right now. It would just take a little bit too long. I don't wanna spend the time doing that. But, I mean, the only downside is it's not very flush with his back, but that's just my little pet peeve. Um, but, like I said, it's, a, it's, it's good for a plastic cape. It's probably one of the better plastic capes you have that you'll get on an action figure and that these pieces do hold somewhat decently not the greatest on mine but I've seen other people's reviews and and they hold up pretty well but I've gotten it to hold and you know you'll see in the photos that I took uh, how well this actually does hold I just uh, like I said I'm just not a ginormous fan of plastic capes just not my not my favorite thing um, but as plastic capes go this is this is pretty cool this is pretty decent it's a pretty decent as an accessory um, yeah that's pretty much it so I'm gonna remove that and uh, I mean to sum it up I think this is this is a really good uh, it's a really good uh, effort on Bandai's part to reproduce this character again and fix some of the mistakes that they had on previous figures uh, you know aside from you know some of the lack of articulation in the hips and with these kind of little weak ass ball joints I mean these ball joints really needed to be a little bit bigger to so that they secured the hand the, or the, all the hands you know properly but uh, aside from that, I think this is a solid, solid ass figure. This is, I mean, this is this is like an A, A minus, I would say. Um, if I had to grade it, you know, it's it's definitely gonna. If you're if you're a fan of Garo, I would definitely suggest you get this figure. Um, or if you just like, or if you just like really good, well qual, well put together action figures, I still would suggest you get it. Um, you know it's especially now since it's it's in production and you're not gonna pay you know uh, aftermarket prices I would get this guy get it while it's available get it while it's hot um, I got nothing else really to add uh, I'm just I'm happy I got this guy so that's all that matters to me <laughs> you know but that's pretty much it uh, until the next review I will catch you guys later I am agent O and I'm out Peace.